I'm gonna draw Youngblood in nine different styles. So if you like looking at his pretty face, then scroll. Scroll away right now. Style one, Tim Burton. I think I'll start with a creepy style. Everybody knows Tim Burton's style. I've seen Youngblood in a stripy suit, not unlike Beetlejuice. So I'm gonna kind of hybridize those two images. I'll give him those big Tim Burton eyes. Shed like 20 kilos, so he's looking super gaunt. And we are off to a creepy start. Look at this, this is the uh, guy that sits at the end of my bed every night when I turn off the lights. This is him and he just stares at me like this, just, just, just waiting. Style two, South Park. Similar eyes to Tim Burton, only this time they're close together. I'll chuck in his thick eyelashes, give him all his teeth, delicate cheekbones, minimal hands, no shading in the color, big thick eyebrows. South Park Youngblood, he is one cigarette away from chilling with the goth kids and calling everybody a conformist Aren't you buddy? Yes you were. Style three, The Mask. Talking about the comic book The Mask, not the cinematic masterpiece starring Jim Carrey. I'll base Youngblood loosely off The Mask, because they both seem to often have their tongue out, and just exaggerate his features. I'll give him a big left popping eye, give him this jacket that I've seen Youngblood wear, and then I'll come in strong with lots and lots of cross hatching. Then I'll use my grey marker to shade it and really make him pop. Straight up, just looking at this, I reckon if they ever remade The Mask as a movie, I reckon Youngblood would be the perfect fit. He would fit better than a Pringle in a Hungry Man's Mouth, he would. Style four, Ginger Taylor. If you're not familiar with Ginger Taylor's work, this is it. She's an Australian artist and an incredible one at that. Round lines in her character designs, so I'll give him the iconic head shape she uses. I'll chuck in big eyes like her, and in a way, big eyes like Youngblood. I'll give him this outfit that I saw him wear in this photo. I don't know what awards show that is, but he looks good. Half a jacket, that can't be comfortable, can it? I'll frame it with a rope ring, get in a little bit of shading, give him some black lipstick, and whoops. I have accidentally drawn James Charles. Sorry, sisters. Style five, Powerpuff Girls. I'm not gonna base Youngblood off a Powerpuff Girl, but I'll loosely base him off him. Given Youngblood and him's stance on gender fluidity, I feel like this is fitting. I really like when Youngblood wore that clueless outfit, so I'll give him that. I base the face more off the Powerpuff Girls side characters. Circly eyes, a shape for a nose, and a very blobby shine in his hair. And here it is, a nice little picture of your brain cells after you inject one pot. Don't do drugs. Style six, Tom Oreb. If you've ever seen an old commercial starring Disney characters that's black and white and a little bit mid-century looking, then you've seen Tom Oreb's work. He was an animator who drew in the style that we might just now know as retro or vintage. Clean lines everywhere, big bulging eyes, disconnected ear. I'll color in black and white as though it was made before color TV but I'll sneak in those pink socks. And if you have ever wondered what Youngblood would look like in a cartoon commercial for a vacuum in the 1950s, then, well, I guess you can stop wondering. Here it is. Style seven, recess. I feel like Youngblood would fit in with the recess gang. Bit of a rebel, bit of a good spirit, bit of an outcast. I like this. I'll keep the lines clean, but not too simplistic. I'll chuck them in the black and pink stripy shirt with the high-waisted shorts, the creepers and the pink socks, and just make him look a bit proud. Don't know what he's proud of. Maybe his discography. And there you go, a mishmash of 1950s, mid-thousands and current fashion drawn in the style of Disney in the 90s. We did it, Reddit. We really did. Style eight, Sean Dickinson. If you've never seen Sean Dickinson's work, this is it right here. A lot of black and white with big smooth lines and massive white highlights everywhere. I'll chuck a creeper out the front, a creeper in the back, put his arms straight down, a static pattern on the shirt, eyes that look like they could be out of Steamboat Willie, a color of pastel pink and a baby blue. And there you go. This one's actually kind of neat. I like it visually, but also the posture of Youngblood here. I think it's a nice tribute to a very underrated walking style. Bring back the big step knuckle drag, I say. Bring it back. Style nine, as the Harry Bow Bear. Not really a style, more of a mashup here because Youngblood said that he cannot live without his Haribos. Pretty crazy to think he'd die without them. I guess I'll just draw the bear's shape and stick Youngblood's head on it. I'll give him Youngblood's necklaces, then the Haribo Bear's bow tie. Maybe a bit of black lipstick up the top. And of course, color him all yellow. Oh, there it is. Forgive me, I have done a sin. We're just gonna hold this for two more seconds so you can soak up that sin. Okay. I'll chuck in a bonus style, streetless. That's me, my style. I wanna bring back that clueless outfit, make his face look a bit sharp and gaunt like in the Tim Burton one. I'll give him the circular frame like in the Ginger Taylor picture, stick his tongue out, chuck in those pigtails that he actually wore with the clueless outfit. 
And then coming strong with the color, a yellow checkered jacket, blue in the background. And now we finally know what it would look like if there was an ambitious crossover between Clueless and the Joker and Youngblood was given the protagonist role. We can rest easy, I guess. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the drawings. Hope you enjoyed the video. Shout out to Bread. Shout out to Youngblood. And shout out to you. You know, you're a, you're a freaking weapon. You don't even know it. You can do it. You can achieve all your dreams. I love you. That's it from me. Catch gotcha. ya.